Welcome one and all to the K5 Experience. Yes, we love to review stuff here and we love to review Majorette. And I'm gonna start a whole load of reviews on the Majorette that I've been picking up over the past few months from both TK Maxx, Home Bargains and Morrisons. So uh, let's start with this gift pack. I believe it's definitely a turning point piece for Majorette and shows us all that they are here as a brand to stick around. to be reviewed. So uh, where should we start? Oh, let's start with the Beetle because I don't really have anything to compare this Beetle to. It it's telling us uh, it's 164 scale. So maybe in the future uh, I can do something with it. But for now we'll just extol the virtues of this particular specimen. Lovely opening uh, bonnet there which reveals a very small in uh, luggage compartment. Interesting. But nice that it opens up nonetheless. I do like that blue. It's uh, quite, um, it's pretty bright, very bright colour for a beetle, especially back in the 1950s. I'm guessing this is a 1950s style beetle, given it's got that little oval uh, window at the rear there, as, oppo as opposed to the split window, which is sort of like indicative of the 30s and 40s beetles. So it's probably a 1950s version. Uh, only criticism really on this model is it's a little bit narrow for my tastes. I do like a more chubbier beetle. Um, I do like the roof line however and the profile is really really good. I'm liking the new uh, wheels too. Um, interesting they've gone for this obviously they've got to go down the track. Kids have got to be able to handle them and they've got suspension so overall and plus it's got those uh, little uh, headlamps there, uh, plastic headlamps which is awesome. So overall it's a rather rather cool little model and uh, I'm liking the way that they've been uh, crafted as well. You'll see with all these models they've all got um, well more or less got silver bases and they use that uh, to mark out details like bumpers etc. But yeah overall a nice little piece. The next uh, car I'm going to look at I think is going to be the Renault Alpine A110 Oh my word, what a delicious little car. Sparkly blue. Feature on this car is the opening doors, which is a great feature, actually. Gives you a chance to really inspect the interior there. You can see those lovely racing seats. Of course, these are two seaters. This particular version of the car is, um, it is nice, don't get me wrong. It's a little bit, it's the, like the wide version. It's got little uh, wheel arches there, extending out slightly. It's got the full rally headlamp accessory front end there, which is awesome. I do believe this car has actually now come out in rally mode. So uh, that's a, a gonna be a welcome uh, addition to most people's uh, majorette rally car collection. I know if I could get hold of it, I probably would. Base is nice. Again, all the bases on these uh, vintage cars, all brand new castings, well, pretty brand new. And lots and lots of attention to detail there. Lovely, lovely piece. Um, this particular color actually would lend itself nicely to a gendarme. And I just quickly got the um, no rev example here to show you. And uh, no rev, of course, is a slightly more premium brand compared to Majorette. But uh, Majorette, they're doing a very good job overall at giving us a good example of the lovely A110. So yeah, there we go. And that's what your, uh, your rally version is going to look like, hopefully, 
when it comes out. If you notice the blue as well, a lot lighter. It's a lot more like the gendarme blue, that blue, compared to the uh, what I consider to be the actual rally blue, which is this one here. up I think we'll look at the Mustang <laughs> yeah well this is a lovely lovely piece yet again you wouldn't be disappointed if this was the only Mustang you had of the what's well, basically the 1967 2 plus 2 I believe on the base it doesn't really say but yeah it's a Ford Mustang 1967 and you can tell by the uh, the slightly less uh, accentuated slope there it's much more a much smoother slope on the rear end um, lots and lots of uh, obviously the the evolution of the Mustang at this stage was still quite young. Mustang came out in 1965, the original pony car, so to speak. And by 1967, they were uh, just changing things up slightly. But uh, again, I'm going to sh just show you a premium version, just so you get a good a good idea of what you're getting uh, in your. Uh, details so this is the auto world 67 mustang and you can see there even though it's it it's simplified it's a simplified version you do get a good carry through there especially on the nose of that silver you've got all the details basically of the actual car and i like the rear end here on the uh, the majorette because that bumper which is a carry through where is it from it's a silver part it's coming from somewhere it's just like amazing because it's an extra part because the interior is red so that is an extra part there an extra piece of plastic you don't see that very often maybe if someone wants some someday we'll take this apart and we can see where it's coming from but that has given us a very very nicely defined rear end and there you go that's the there's the detail levels, very good from Majorette and making the Majorette easily a three pound car all day long. Of course you get the extra detail around the windshield and all the chroming and the wheels on the Auto World and the metal base. But you don't get the suspension of course. So there you go, it's a nice car, very nice car and its feature is opening doors. So again you get to see an interior which is uh, nice really. And it's got rear view mirrors too. And they're on the doors, which is brilliant. Love it. from the other end now let's have a look at this this is the 90 well it's a 1960 something or other early 60s type 2 t1 camper van of course it's not the samba samba famously has the uh, little roof lights as well uh, roof windows across the top there classically a 24 window vehicle this is only the uh, this is the more modest version. I love love the colour of this. Great colour choice. Of course, you can have, you can have one of these in any colour you like, really. Very very. I like the way the lights have been done. That is good. Got an interesting crack in the windshield there. That's uh, that's a new. <laughs> Just spotted that. Nothing to worry about there, really. I suppose. It's got the two doors on, on the uh, side there, of course, that's for your passengers. This is more of a mini bus than it is a uh, camper van though. There's no kitchen in there. 
There are lots of seats there, lots of seats. And the feature on this vehicle is this little rear door. So I'll just get in there. It's nice actually, that's made of die cast. And it has a little window in there as well, which is a, a great little feature from uh, Majorette. They do that a lot. Plastic base, full suspension, and sporting some new disky moon wheels. Very nice. I like the base on it too. Very nice. Yeah, I've got a VW T1. Now this feature here is not a new feature and it's a, it's really nice to see because it is a feature from the ancient times. And here we have a 1981-82 a period. This is the Type 2 or T2 camper van. It's around about the same size as this one, which is cool. So this is uh, what 160, that's 159. This one's slightly bigger scale. Fantastic. So they go together really coolly, but the feature was carried over from the original. Here's the old version with the opening rear end, rear tailgate. Shows you where they put the cargo. Of course, this one, got, this one has a big sliding door on the side and uh, the cargo bed crosses the engine, goes down, and then you have a nice big open in the rear there. But there we go. There's a Type 3 van, but I like that. I like how they've uh, recaptured the old and given it to the new. Brilliant. the new how about this then this is the, a very very cool piece this is a 1976 slash 77 911 basically it's called the actual designation is the 934 Porsche 934 now this was a racing car originally used as you know sports car racing and uh, obviously this is the civilian version of that but uh, it would look very, very nice indeed with a few racing town posts plaster all over it. It would not look out of place. Um, again, it's all been done up. It's got lovely suspension. The opening feature is the doors yet again. Can't go wrong with opening doors. I think Majorette interiors are probably the one of the best interiors you're going to get at this level. It's kind of mid-range. It's not super budget and it's not super premium. But what you do get is a very, very accurate little toy car. And again, I'm going to look back. <laughs> First of all, I'll just show you the premium vehicle. Now, this is, of course, it's a Tomica uh, premium. Uh, it's a slightly earlier Porsche, a 1971 model. It's kind of related to the slightly later model. This, this would have preceded, uh, would, would have come after this one. So it goes white one, then red one in car performance but both Carreras very nice this of course is a slightly smaller scale so I'm not even gonna not even gonna go there but it just gives you an idea of uh, I think that this Porsche casting wise is probably the nicest model in the, in the box actually the only thing that does actually let it down and lets down lots of lots and lots of cars at this level is the uh, the wheel suspension it, these these wheels are just way too low, um, you know, hanging down too much. They should really be up inside the wheels a little bit more, something like that. And then this car would be perfect, literally perfect. In fact, if you had something like that in the wheel wells, you'd be laughing. But the reason I like this car is because I like this car. And this is the old original car from the late 80s. This is a kind of a roughly a 1973-74 Porsche Turbo. Tells you on the bottom there, Porsche Turbo, made in France. Lovely piece. Has a, a little feature actually, opening doors. Not much of an interior. 
So you can actually safely set and all the other thing about this is the wide wheels. And look at those, they're awesome. I, I like the wide wheels. Some people don't like them because they're just too mad, but that's the appeal of that for me. It's just it's so wide. But it is actually a cartoon, cartoonized version, I think, of uh, what they've given us now, a, a more realistic model of the old classic flat wheeler. Fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant tempo treatment as well. Everything you need. And there we go. <laughs> Things that I bought whilst I was down here, and we'll start with this one here, which is quite random. I picked this up in a shop called um, Best Bargains, which is a bit like Poundland, etc. Um, it's from a manufacturer called Zuru. You might have seen them. Uh, it claims to be diecast, although the only thing that is diecast is the base. So a little bit of a cheat in some ways when it's uh, just called metal machines. It should really be plastic with a bit of metal machines. Um, I like this one because I don't know the shape of it is quite reminiscent of a 70s car and uh, it just sort of works the rest I have to say which are illustrated on the back are pretty patchy they're all generic no real vehicles um, packaging is extremely well done for some of this cheap stuff that comes in but uh, I think they're trying to eat into the market uh, very much looking like a Hot Wheels car yeah, that's that one and then we'll move on to three that i purchased in asda this one which is the uh 64 chevy chevelle as it says ss i like the color scheme on this very attractive very brief this i'm afraid sorry uh the audi rs avant not the 94 as everybody knows about it's more like uh 2004 or thereabouts um in white with the horrible post in the back. But, um, I don't know. I picked this up in a moment of weakness, I think, it being Christmas. And then this one, which again, I wasn't necessarily going to buy. I've got the blue one. Um, but I suppose this model means quite a lot to me because it was the second one I did for the uh, Matchbox Custom Competition, where I put a, a Japanese bar on the back of it. There you go, that one. Um, and now we're going to move on to things that I bought in Home Bargains. There are, in fact, about three home bargains in the Newport area, which is where I am, Newport in South Wales. This is the first one I got, the uh, Honda Civic Type R. I'm sure Chris Countfellow has gone over this one before. A very attractive, slightly high sitting, but um, a lot of these I bought because I thought, oh, I'm not going to find much because it has been so poor. And then as the days went on here, I was finding more and more. So I've now got an incredible amount of stuff, which is good. Uh, and this one, the Aston Martin Vantage GT8, which is the one I really wanted to get. Uh, as you can see, I've taken out the packaging. This is a superb model, really is first class. All the printing, very nicely done. Looks right, looks like a more expensive model. Cost me 99p, although these models on the uh, premium cars should really sell for about four quid. So... We've all had a bit of a bargain from Home Bargains. That's that one. And then we're going to move on to these three Hot Wheels I picked up in Smith's Toys. The Audi, which Count 5 has already talked to us about. Been very much trying to get hold of that one. Delighted to get that. The short wheelbase Audi Quattro. Uh, the Tesla, the one that went into space. And this one, which I don't know whether K5 has got, but this is the 88 Honda CRX. I like this car in real life. I still think it looks very good for its age in terms of real car. Got some nice printing on the back of it. Haven't taken it out of his box. Right, uh, we're getting there. These, right, this one I picked up in a charity shop just down the road from my in-laws, which is where I'm staying in Newport. Um, it's a Corgi model, but in fact, actually, it's a Lado. Um, it's based on a Lado uh, Marathons series which are a very much basic dumbed down 
toy-like. They weren't sold as models originally, um, but this is a Leyland Road train. Okay, um, they did cheapen this by taking away an extra wheel that was here. So if you have a look for this Lado Marathon, so it's Lado with two L's, and you'll find this truck. Okay, plastic here. That bit's metal, but um, reactivated by Corgi under their ownership of Lado for a promotional vehicle. Apparently, there was only two thousand of these made, and I've got one five eight eight. I've never seen them before, and I couldn't even see any on eBay. So there you go. Uh, this one, which another days gone when it was days gone, and they were made in this country. This is a Bedford Walls sausage and pies van very nicely done sorry about the rubbish on the screen there uh well, the reason why i got this is because the company was based not far from where i worked in acton the wilsden acton area in atlas road and i think the address on there actually does say somewhere atlas road um maybe on the back i can't remember there but there you go so that's that one and i picked that up for uh, three pound i think it was and then we're on to Christmas presents. And I did get hold of this. This is one I bought for myself. A Toyota 2000 GT by Tomica. Tomy. Uh, their um, premium line. Fantastic model. Let's see if I can get it out one-handed. Okay, in its little plastic bag. And there it is. Beautifully done. They aren't rubber tyres, but it doesn't matter because this is a static model, effectively. Doors that do open. Uh, and an extremely nice level of detailing and printing. It looks very, very sharp. No bleeding or anything. That back window is actually solid cast. It's not actually clear, but it doesn't matter. Uh, very, very nice. And if you compare that to the Hot Wheels, the Hot Wheels doesn't come out too badly in some ways, but it, this one sits a lot better, and obviously the level of detail is much greater. So that's that one. And then we'll finish with these two. This is something I bought with some money that was given to me for Christmas. So it's a sort of Christmas present, and this is the uh, Oxford Diecast uh, British Leyland, or BMC, British Motor Corporation originally, that's why it's got the number plate BMC on there, and this was the auto transporter that was used by the tuning team over at Abingdon, uh, where all the BMC and British Leyland tuning was done. That tailgate does come down, but it's very, very hard to do, and it's made of plastic. It's only my only complaint about this model. There is enough space in there. To put a British Leyland car. So I looked around in the shop that I got it from a very good shop in Newport, in uh, Spitty in Newport. If you ever find yourself there, go and have a look. Uh, it's opposite the tills at the big Tesco's in Spitty. Um, and one of the few places I've actually seen Oxford diecast in the flesh rather than mail order or online. So this is a TR6, extremely well done, I have to say. It's been a long time since I bought an Oxford diecast. This is quite well done, and it will fit in the back of there, and it's the right scale because this is 176, and that's 176 as well. So, sorry about the rather rapid run through, but you can see there was quite a bit of stuff to do, and I don't want to bore you. This one here, hopefully, I'll show you something when I've done with that. But um, I don't know whether I'm going to go for a full restoration or partial. Um, who knows? But uh, there's plenty of scope for it, and. Um, I had one of these as a child, actually. It was a metallic green civilian version. Much treasured model. And I always liked the way that this little fan was the same plastic as the indicators. So there you go. Nice, flat, air-cooled engine. Very, very nicely done model, that one. And you're funny, all this stuff that I've got, some of it I paid good money for, and that's the one that I like from the whole holiday. Isn't that funny? 99p and it's uh, nearly as old as me. Welcome to another bat infested section. <laughs> Today, in my little Batman quest, I have picked up, or you might say discovered, some new stuff from uh, the Jada Mini Figs, or Nano Figs as they're called. Nano Metal Figs. And uh, here it is. I managed to find a penguin. Now, I don't know if you recall me saying uh, I couldn't, I didn't think they made a penguin. Well, they just started to do a penguin. They've got all sorts here. They've got a new Batman figure. Well, a couple of new ones, which I'm thinking about getting. 
This is a Batgirl, which I'm definitely uh, considering, and a Catwoman. So if I see those two, I'll definitely be picking those two up. Um, but for this occasion, I found me a penguin. So this is modelled from the 1966 TV series, played by Burgess Meredith, I believe. And Burgess uh, appeared in quite a few films around uh, the well, late 60s, early 70s, and probably prior to that. I'm not too sure all of his films. Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't he? Wasn't he in that uh, that race film? Was it called the? Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, there are lots of cars in it, and I think Burgess was in that as well. But he did an excellent portrayal of this uh, villain, <laughs> villainous nasty from the the Batman 60s period. One of my favourite characters, of course, Penguin. always remember his little laugh. <laughs> That's probably a terrible impersonation. Uh, very controversial as well, I should imagine, uh, especially nowadays if you're watching... Uh, the old Batman film still. He, he, this guy smokes uh, a rather long cigarette. But there he is. It's lovely detail. And of course, uh, he looks very, uh, I suppose, Gatsby, isn't he? Great Gatsby period costume. I always remember him having spats. Uh, for, not for this occasion, though. I suppose you could add a, a big cigarette if you wanted to. Wouldn't be too tricky. These are all appear to be uh, painted by hand. And I only say that because like the detail runs, you know, all the way round up to his ears. Very nicely done. I mean, they're all coming in at around about two pound each. And there's a, a huge series. They do all sorts, Marvel, DC, Harry Potter. But I'm kind of going with the, uh, the Batman characters right now. Yeah, made in China. And of course, the penguin needs a car. Um, let's have a little look. Hold on, stick him down here. Well, he's quite big for the uh, the Hot Wheels version, but as you can see there, he fits in nicely with those Eagle Moss 143s. And they're available from B&M still. I don't think you'll be able to get those two in particular, but there is a whole range of stuff like this, the uh, more unusual cars that Batman drove around in. But of course... They have the Hot Wheels models in there, and I did find a Batman Returns Ducky Wucky. Here he is. Let's check it out. Had it open on the back here, gives you a, a quick look at some of the other stuff. Most of that I've got, the only one I haven't got at the moment is the bat, right. And there it is, right. Probably seen this a long time ago. It's been out for a long, long time. Um, but yeah, this is uh, the duck, appears in Batman Returns. I think Danny DeVito played the penguin on that occasion. He drives in a <laughs> rather astonishing scene where he's got all these, his penguin friends and he's sitting in this rather weird looking duck vehicle don't really know what it has really got to do with um, penguins, but there you go. So basically it's a plastic, plastic, plastic base, plastic, uh, very nice solid plastic actually, duck, with the metal portion in the middle there that seems to be the bit that holds it all together, there you see. But the scale of this is it's quite ambiguous really. It's got a great big chunky steering wheel up top there. So let's, get, let's have Burgess. Doesn't look too bad next to his duck. It's like a mini duck. It's the weirdest thing. Is it a golf cart duck? It's just weird. I mean, here's the actual vehicle to go with it in the, or more probably this one here. Really, chase that down the road. I'm sure this is just so Burgess can get around or Danny at the time could just get around in there crazy looking costume but uh, yeah there you go the duck and the penguin together at last reunited oh that's sweet of this pantheon of villains that are appearing now I have to get some more really befuddled Batman I think he's probably wondering where Robin is to be fair 
So I thought I'd do a little in-depth bit about this uh, Corgi Porsche 911 uh, S and it's a Targa and it's a police version so it's an enormous amount of specifications um, apologies for the rather lacy background this is uh, my in-laws front room and it was a nice light area so um, so what can we say about this well um, I believe it came out around about 1970 6970 it originally came with I think the pre the first generation of whiz wheels which were a sort of a brass um, centered wheel with rubber tires and a plastic sort of um, hub point uh, these are obviously quite expensive to produce, and then they came up with these single-piece um, polythene uh, compound wheels, which is whiz wheels, second generation. So, um, yeah, let's talk about this in a bit more detail. My uh, trusty tripod, so you'll have to forgive my big chubby fingers all over it. Um, this I found for 99p in a mixed assortment of stuff in a tray in a collector's shop in Newport. Um, it's missing various things like the diamond headlamps, uh, the stickers on the doors, although this one's still there, which just basically says Polizzi. So there was two versions of this that were produced, very similar. Uh, one was the Belgian police and one was the Dutch police, I believe, and I think this is the Dutch police version. Uh, the Belgian one had just a red front bit, no full bonnet, just the red bit there, but red doors. Uh, all this stuff's online, you can check it for cross-referencing. This uh, megaphone on the back, it's not a siren, it's uh, well, it could be a siren, but I think it's a megaphone, it's a speaker so that they could shout at people. Um, it's a little bit out of scale. It's accurate, but it's out of scale in terms of, uh, I think it was probably about um, at least half the size of that, maybe just a little bit bigger. Um, and then you've got this little stalk on the side, which has got the uh, beacon the uh, blue flashing light, which the chroming has come off and the blue translucent stuff's come off. Uh, interesting enough, I was saying to K5 about this, it's incredible that uh, a few things are missing off this model, but generally speaking, in very good condition. And this little blue light would actually just, it just pops out actually. So it's surprising it managed to survive when it's so easy to take out. In the back here, we've got a nice detailed engine. And as you can see, they use the same plastic moulding for the uh, rear light clusters, uh, for the fan, the air cooling fan. Um, yes, it's, it's a bit, bit battered, but I mean, the glass is in good condition. Little major scratching on there. There's one on the back, which is a bit of a crack. But um, you've got the word Targa on there. That would be on a stainless steel section around there. That Targa top would come off. I believe it was a habit of the... Um, the Belgian police to actually have a, a driver and a, a sort of co-driver, and the co-driver would stand up to take the target top off, and he'd be able to stand up and therefore, I don't know, point at people or whatever he needed to shoot at people. God knows what they got up to. Um, but yes, it's a high-speed pursuit vehicle for the autobahns in those countries. Um, and this model, uh, I think, was in the range for a good few years, probably withdrawn about seventy-four or something. Um, it's it's really curious as to why they did it. I suppose just as usual with Corgi, uh, someone had seen it in a magazine or newspapers or whatever, and they decided to model it. And that's great because it means they went to some trouble. Um, and as usual with Corgi, certainly this time period, the, the detailing is brilliant and the craftsmanship and engineering is good because this is an old model um, that still runs straight and true um and the suspension's all good and you know the major components are still on it um and it's a very well detailed model i mean you know you've got opening doors you've got tilting seats they do tilt forward a nice car separate cast metal steering wheel um and you know detailing like the uh, the porsche name cast in it does say 911 on there as well you know a remarkably well done model you've got a separate piece of die cast metal for the bumpers Fenders, you know, it's solid. I would say indestructible, but I'm tempting fate. But it's a, a really, really good model. Very, very attractive. Uh, and I had the, um, uh, I think it was the green or blue version of this that existed as a civilian version, not the police one. And I believe that it's, if you see and see there where this, uh, so, this, yeah, let's take it out so I can show you. It's that easy to remove this part. 
there it is and that goes into that little bit there and as you can see they made an adaption to the clear glazing section so that would fit in if you have a look at the civilian version I think they use the same plastic piece maybe this came out before the civilian one I don't know it doesn't make any sense does it but perhaps it did um, so yeah I think we've talked enough about that one uh, whether I do a restoration or not it's begging for it I suppose the only problem is with Corgi is that it's not so easy to drill these rivets out because they are domed so I may just be in a situation where I patch up re-chrome the wheels and maybe just dot in I don't know it's hard to say sometimes doing a restoration can be more trouble than it's worth um, and with these Corgi models all these moving parts and fixed on features it's difficult this this uh, megaphone is riveted on it's not a it's not easy to take that off and when you're respraying it's, it, it presents issues could mask it but anyway time will tell other than that i'm really pleased because it only cost me a quid and it's a nice model so there you go that's uh five minutes and 50 seconds nearly six minutes on that one Welcome one and all to another Majorette Marathon. <laughs> yes, we've got three cars to see. first year and then the daddy of them all on this occasion Leslie 